Father, so glad you're joining us today. Let's worship.
what we believe about Jesus. It's so important that before Jesus would heal, he would ask, what do you believe? Do you believe? Is it possible? Listen what he says. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked them, do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, will it be done to you? And their sight was restored. So what blindness do you need healed today? Is there, we all have blind spots. So I want you right now in this moment to say, Lord, I surrender to you. I want you to open my eyes. And I do believe from the bottom of my heart that you are capable of healing my blindness. So Father God, we come to you right now. From every room, every car, every area that we're at, Lord God, and we surrender to you as our Lord and our King. And say, touch us, Lord God, with your healing hands. We believe that you are a God that does miracles and you are capable of healing our blindness, our spiritual blindness, our physical blindness, our emotional blindness. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you would heal and touch right now in this moment. Father God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you are who you say you are and you do what you say you will do. So be with us today. Be present with us, Lord God. We lift up Pastor Rick as he brings a powerful word about Jesus. Open our ears. We want to hear what you have to say to us today. Open our hearts. Let the seed of your word be planted in our heart. Let it grow and bear fruit, Lord God. We thank you for this time, and we praise you as our mighty Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says amen and amen. Yes, isn't God wonderful? He is a good father. He is a faithful father and a loving father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, welcome to The Rock. We are so glad that you're joining us today online. You know, we still miss you guys. We're going to miss you until we're back here all together again. But we do love when you're posting and sharing that you're joining us. So be sure to tag us because it brings such joy to our staff to be able to see you because you get to see us. We don't get to see you. So please tag us and just say hi and let us know that you're watching with us. We have many fun things going on here. Take a look at our announcements. Thanks for joining us this morning. We wanted to take a few moments to share some ways for you to stay connected to God during this time. In light of recent events, this year's VBS has been moved to an online and at-home event. Rock Kids Staycation Bible School registration is now open. Join us from your own homes for a virtual VBS experience as kids discover God's promises in the Bible. As an online event, be sure to share all the details with friends and family all over the world. For more information and to sign up, visit therockca.com slash VBS. Our next gem camp will be three separate camps happening at the same time and at the same place. Your child will enjoy four days and three nights away at our rock exclusive camp at Camp Oakhurst. We'll worship each night with our rock worship team and hear powerful messages from our youth and children's pastors. We're planning on still having our camp. However, payments will not be due right away be sure to visit our website to sign up today. Join us online for all of our services and events. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll have live Bible studies at 10 a.m. 
Wednesday night prayer and worship services at 6.30 p.m. Young adults on Saturday mornings at 10.30 with Zoom small groups. Youth devos on Tuesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m., as well as our main services on Sundays. We have many ways you can give. If you'd like to give via text, text the word GIVE to 925-350-4832, or you can visit our website. And if you're new to The Rock and looking for ways to get connected, one of the best ways to do that is by signing up to receive updates and notifications via text message. All you need to do is text Rock Guest to 33222, and we'll send you more information on how to get connected. Stay updated by following us on Instagram and Facebook. If you have questions or want to find out more, visit our website at therockca.com. Now let's all listen as Pastor Rick delivers today's message. Hey everybody, welcome to The Rock Online. If you're joining us for the first time, great to have you. If you're joining us for the hundredth time, still great to have you. If you have your Bible, open it to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. We're in a new series called Jesus Our Everything. And um, the title today is Jesus Our Creator. I'm going to pray for us and we're going to get into the word. Father, thank you for every person that's viewing. I ask you, Lord, that you would, even in their home, wherever they are, God, that you would meet them, comfort them, that, Lord, this word would give them hope and give them life. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So the first thing we need to understand is that our, who is God talking to when he says, let us make man in our image? Who is he talking to? He's talking to Jesus and he's talking to the Holy Spirit. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit were all involved in creation. And I want, to, I want to show you something in John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So we need to understand something about Jesus being our creator is that Jesus was the master builder. He was involved in creation. Matter of fact, it says right here, all things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. So we just need to understand the first thing about Jesus because we could just jump right to Jesus, our savior or Jesus, our Lord. But we need to understand that God is our creator, that Jesus was part of the process of creating the whole world, the universe, and you, that he was part of that process. And so you were created by God and you are unique. There is no one else like you. In the whole world, there's no one like you. Your fingerprints are totally unique to you. That's why they use fingerprints for, for ID, to, to check people. Because no one else has your fingerprints. God breathed life into man and gave him life. And, and I'm going to read that in just a second. But you're unique before God. And, and that's why murder is so wrong. Because men are created in the image of God. In the likeness of God. So no matter, no matter where people are, whether they're in Africa living in nothing, whether they're there's a wealthy person living right here in Blackhawk. All men really are equal because we were all God-breathed, God-created, all of us, and we all have the same value before God. And so Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, says this, Then the Lord God formed man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became living. So watch this. God took, because so when God created Adam, it's kind of, kind of creepy, but because you imagine just, I don't want to see dead people. I don't like it. I've, I've seen a few and it's, it's just weird. There's no life in them. Like you just remember them so alive, but there is no life in them. And here's Adam just laying there lifeless on the ground. And God, the Bible says, breathed into him the breath of life. And so if you're alive today, there's a reason why you're alive. God has a purpose and God has a plan for you. He's breathed life into you so that you could live for him in reality. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So if God is our creator, then he is our sustainer. 
If God created us, then he is our sustainer. Because everything in this, in this world, if you think about it, we're, you know, this is show, goes to show you that all, even a little bacteria, a little virus can just kind of ruin everything. And we can't even see it. And so God is the one who holds the universe together. The Bible says that he holds the universe in the span of his hand. He holds all things together, and we're going to read that verse here in just a second. So God breathed into man life, and I want, I want to show you this in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by him, talking about Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and, uh, and, and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in, in him all things were Hold together. So watch this. God is our sustainer. All things are held together by him. That's why Jesus in the Gospels said, I don't want you to worry about your life. Why do you worry all the time? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Watch. All these things you're worried about. All these things that you're, that you're concerned. Aren't, you're not going to have food, clothing, health. Jesus said, quit worrying about those things because by worrying you can't add that to your life. He is the one that the that scripture says all things are held together by him. Matter of fact, there, in science, there is, I think they call it black matter or something in the universe. I, I'm not a scientist, so I, I just heard this on a documentary. They don't know exactly how the universe is held together. They can't figure it out. And I say, I know, I know how it's held together. It's held together by the word of God. It's held together by Jesus because the Bible says in him, all things are held together. So if he's our creator, if God is our creator, then he is also our sustainer. He's the one that provides for us and cares for us. That's the way God intended it. God intended when he created Adam and Eve to have fellowship with them in, in a garden and beautiful where he had provided for them. His desire is to provide for his creation. And we get worried and anxious and all whipped up. And we don't remember that Jesus created us and he loves us, and he put us here for a purpose. And so God gave man when he needed before he created him. And I think it was either Aaron Hammerstrom or, or Max Goodell that, that wrote a little devotion uh, in, in, out of Genesis concerning this. And I want you to see something in, in Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to go through this fast. So your homework is to read Genesis chapter 1. Just read the whole thing about creation. It says this, In the beginning... God created the heaven and earth. So watch this. In the beginning, John chapter 1, who was there in the beginning? Jesus. The Bible says he's the word of God. And he was there in the beginning as the master builder. So uh, this, this is what the scripture says. God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. How many know we can't live without light? Men can't live without sun. We have to have the sun. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God called the expanse heaven. And then uh, verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let dry land appear. How many of you are grateful that there's dry land, that we're not living in water world? Even though that was a terrible movie, but anyways. And so it was. And God called the dry land earth and the waters that he gathered together he called seas. And God said... Let the, the earth sprout vegetables, plants, yielding seeds, and tr uh, fruit and trees. And all the vegetarian people said, amen. And the Bible even says that God gave us those things to eat for our good. And then verse 14, and God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate day from night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days. The stars. That, that, that's what God, God put in the, in the heavens. And God said, verse 20, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. Verse 24, and God said, let the earth bring forth uh, living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, and, and everyone that is not a vegetarian said, amen. There, there's livestock, and God said we could eat those. So a good piece of filet mignon with a nice, you know, here's how I like my vegetables. I like my vegetables like those uh, red bell peppers. I like them chopped up. And I like them cooked with my filet mignon. That's the way to do it. See, that's being biblical. That's obeying scripture. Because we're supposed to eat all those things. But I want you to catch this. That the Bible actually declares that before God made Adam, he made all this. He didn't put Adam in this void earth and say, well, I hope it works out for you. I hope you live long enough to, to figure out how to make stuff. 
How many know we can't make anything? We can't make trees. We can't make oxygen. We can't create sunlight. God did that. And the reason why God did that is because he cared about man. So before he even made Adam, he created everything that Adam would need. And then he put him in the garden and he said, there you go, bud. You can eat all these things. You can take care of all this stuff. There's no problems. You're going to be, I mean, could you imagine one rule? Don't touch the tree. I mean, don't eat the tree. He actually didn't say don't touch it. He said don't eat it. One rule. Is all they had to deal with. And so God created this perfect place for them to have fellowship with him and, to, and that, that he would care for them. And I, and I want you to catch this. If he is our creator, if God is our creator, then what are the ramifications of this? If Jesus created us, then what are the ramifications of him being our creator? I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. One, he knows us better than anyone. How many of you know that the maker of a product knows that product better than anyone? So I, I was, uh, I've written some worship songs, and I was, this was years ago, probably, oh man, 20 years ago. I was speaking at a conference, and I got in the night before the conference started, and the band was setting up, and they were setting up this, this, this venue, and the band was doing, uh, you know, they were warming up, and they were doing like a sound check, and I walked in, and I didn't know, you know, what songs they were doing. Well, they were doing a song that I had written, and they were doing it wrong. It was not right. The melody wasn't even right. It was so bad. And, and the guy's singing it, and I'm, I'm out in the crowd, just, you know, like a German shepherd tilting my head, not quite sure what I'm hearing. So afterwards, I, you know, I don't really care, but I walked up to the guy and I said, hey, man, you guys sound great. You know that one song you were doing, What I Believe? Yeah, I think the, the melody of that is blah, blah, blah. And he goes, no, I know how it goes. And I said, oh, okay. And I just... Went back to my hotel room and slept and got up in the morning to come speak at the conference. And when I got in there, the worship leader came up to me before it started. And he points his finger at me and he goes, you. And I go, what? And he goes, you should have told me you wrote the song. See, listen, I was the creator of the song. I know how it should function. I know it better than anyone. And so God created us and he knows exactly how we're supposed to function. He knows what's good for us. He knows what's bad for us. He knows what we shouldn't do and what we should do. He created us uniquely, and he knows exactly why he made us. There's a, when I lived out in the country, there was a, you know, you're bored because you're in the country. There's nothing to do. It's like we're in the middle of nowhere. And my buddy comes over, and mom and dad are gone, and that's, you know, they're at work. And so we find in, in the garage two of those, I, th I think they call them furniture dollies, where you go up and you can like move a fridge with it. Well, we found two of them, and they were two different ones, and we laid them down with the little parts sticking up like this and the wheels kind of down on the ground, and we shoved one inside the other. The handles fit right into the other one, and it laid down perfectly. And I was like, dude, this is a go-kart. So my buddy jumped on the front one with his feet up against the little thing and I sat in the back and then I grabbed the middle thing and I could actually move it and we could kind of steer it and then we would tie a rope onto anyone going down our long dirt road to their hitch of their truck and let them pull us down the road. How many know it was dangerous? It was really very fun, very fun. But the maker of those dollies would say, not the purpose and matter of fact, that day we, we broke the side of somebody's truck off where the, you tie the rope onto on the old school trucks. We pulled it right out because I crashed into a irrigation kind of ditch that had a big piece of concrete in it. And when my dad got home, he realized what we had done. And how you know, he didn't agree with our, our, our solutions and how we were using that, that it wasn't supposed to be used that way. See, if you're using your life in a way that's outside of God's plan for you, it damages you. And we're going to talk about that at the end of the message. Number two, he knows the, his original intent for us. He knows exactly what he created us for. He created us for a purpose. And that purpose was to love him and to worship him and to walk with him and enjoy him. And he created us and he knows what we were created for. Uh, back in probably like, gosh, I was probably 10 years old. I don't know if kids still do this today. But the cool thing was to build a house of cards. And see how big you could make your cards. I mean, you know, make these big old things. And I remember being with, you know, two brothers in the house. There was three of us all together. 
I remember we would always mess with each other if we had built something or worked on something. And, you know, my brother had this big old thing built on the table. And I just walked over to it and I put my hands on the table. You know, you know that look. And I just said, what are you doing? And he goes, man, I'm building this big old thing. And I just started slowly rocking the table. And the whole house of cards just came crashing down. And then I ran for my life because he, he was the special forces brother. So I ran for my life. And here's the funny thing. He spent all that time creating it. And he had the right to be grieved and upset. Because I'm the guy just coming along. I didn't put any effort into this. And I just came over and shake it and cause it to fall. And just like that's what the enemy has done. God created us to love him. And God can't get really, or the enemy can't really get at the Lord. So how does he do it? He hurts the Lord by hurting his creation. He comes after what God created and tries to, tries to bring trouble to it. So the, the maker has the right to be grieved by what has happened to his creation. Number three, he has the right to judge us. If he created us, he has the right to judge us. He has the right to hold us accountable for our lives. He has the right to hold us accountable because I'm going to talk about how he took accountability for us in our fallen state. Right? He just didn't leave us here. And so he has the right to hold us accountable. And uh, Adam and Eve sinned in, in that garden. The devil tempted them and lied to them. And I, I want to show you this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. Then the serpent, so she's out for a walk. There's a snake in the tree. Hey, baby, I got fruit for you. Watch this. And the serpent said to the woman, because uh, she said, no, I can't eat or, or touch that tree or I'll die. And here's how the serpent responded to her, the devil. And the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So here's the thing. Do you really think that God was jealous of Adam and Eve if they ate of that tree? Do you really think God was like, boy, I hope they don't eat of that tree because they'll be like me. They're going to be like the Most High God. But you have to go back in the Old Testament and look at what was the devil's sin? What did he say? I will be like God. I'm going to be like God. So watch this. The enemy was deceived to thinking he could actually be like God. And the God and the God of the universe knocked him down to the earth and said, oh, yeah. And the Bible says that, that, that he was spiked to the earth. Jesus said he saw the devil fall like lightning. So God kicked him out of heaven. And so the enemy's deception was, I want to be like God. And so what does he do? He tempts the man with the same lie with the same temptation because he knows that that's actually not true, that, that no one can be like God. There's only one God. There's only one God that's amazing. And so Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, after they had sinned, they, they sewed some designer fig leaves together to cover their nakedness because they knew they were naked. Genesis 3, 8 says this, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife, watch this, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. So the first thing that happened to God's creation, the crown of creation is man. Not trees, not the sea, not dolphins, not whales. They're beautiful, they're wonderful. God made all that stuff for man. We are the crown of his creation. So God creates this man, puts him in a garden, and the very first thing that happens to man is shame and fear. As soon as he sins against the Lord, he, what does he do? He hides from God. Number one, you can't hide from God. You, he knows exactly where you're at. He knows what you're thinking. There's times I come in here and pray, and I'm like, you know what, Lord? I'm, I'm praying like you don't know how I feel. Like I'm trying to convince you that, that, that I don't feel a certain way. And so God knows how we feel. And, he, and the Lord calls to him, where are you? And Adam says, we're over here. We're naked. And the Lord said, who told you you're naked? And the, the serpent lied to us, blah, blah, blah. You know, and everybody tries to blame everybody in that scenario. And here's the great thing about God. That God took responsibility over his creation. He could have left us exactly in that state. He could have. You know what he could have done? He, because the Bible says that he took man out of the garden and he literally put a guard so that man could not get to the tree of life. Because if man would have gotten to the tree of life and ate of that, we would be in this forever. Could you imagine this? Forever, broken, fallen, 
world that we live in. So God in his mercy said, you're not going to get to the tree of life. He blocked him from getting to the tree of life. And I want you to catch what the Lord does here. This is so amazing. He takes responsibility over his creation and he doesn't have to. He could have left us there. But even throughout the Old Testament, if you read the Old Testament, you know, you read some of the stuff in the Old Testament, you're like, this is so weird. Like God said, okay, when you come to church, when you come to the tabernacle, I want you to bring a bull and 12 pigeons and four turtle doves. And could you imagine coming to church with your family, just coming in church, birds flapping all over and feathers flying everywhere. And you just, you're coming to worship. Listen, but this is really cool. God created a way for man to have his sins forgiven. And God created a man, a, a way for man to have fellowship with him and worship him even after his fallen state. But how many of you know the ultimate sacrifice was the one who in the beginning created all things, who, who breathed life into the nostrils of a man, that he would bring life to us again and that he would make a way for us, that he would be the good shepherd that in John chapter 10 that says, I lay down my life for the sheep. And so God made a way for us to be with him, even in the Old Testament, but then he made the ultimate sacrifice. The Bible says about Jesus that his sacrifice was once and for all. And I want to read this to you, John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief, Jesus is speaking here, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Listen to what Jesus said about himself. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So watch this. This is what Jesus declared about the thief who lied to Adam and Eve and stole from them God's original plan. Here's what Jesus said about him. He said, he's a thief, and all he wants to do is steal and kill in your life. So here's an easy test. How do you know if something, people always say to me, how do you know if it's the Lord or it's the devil? Here you go, ready? If it steals, if it kills, and if it destroys, it's not the Lord. Jesus didn't say, well, I destroy a little bit. Well, I kill a little bit. He said, the devil, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And by the way, the the enemy steals and kills and destroys from us in little ways too because we just don't know that it's him pecking at our lives. The enemy works his way into churches and destroys churches through gossip and slander and through some kind of theological superiority. He tries to destroy and come in. That's why when I see churches getting ripped apart by stuff and somebody has a righteous thing and this guy, he's coming against this guy because he believes he's right and it's actually causing brothers and sisters to divide, I actually go, hmm, that's probably not the Holy Spirit. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And look what Jesus said about himself. I've come to give life. Life eternal, life abundant. How? By his death, by his shed blood, and by his resurrection. So Jesus, watch this, he became the sacrificial lamb so we don't have to come to church anymore with a bull coming, coming behind us and pigeons. We don't have to make sacrifices because Jesus, the Bible, this is what John said. John said, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What's the lamb of God? He laid his life down. He was the sacrificial lamb that died once and for all. So you don't want to stand before the judge without the remedy. And I'm going to have the worship team go ahead and start to make their way out because you don't want to stand, listen, you don't want to stand before the judge without the remedy because there is no pardon without Jesus. Here's the reality. We all sinned against God. It's not just Adam and Eve. It wasn't just Adam and Eve. They were the originals. But you and I have all sinned. Every person in this room, if you've lied, you've sinned. If you've cheated, you've sinned. If you've had sex before marriage, you've sinned. If you've any way that you've violated God's holy commandments, you have sinned. So guess what that means, Romans says. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everyone has sinned. There is, there is no perfect person in this world. So you need Jesus Christ. You need the remedy that God created. Listen, God created a remedy. His name is Jesus. He created a way to be forgiven. It's the blood of Christ. He created a way to heaven, a gate, a door, and his name is Jesus. You don't get into heaven by the door of good works. You don't even get into the door of heaven because you have perfect theology. You get into heaven because of Jesus Christ. God who created us. Listen to this. Jesus created in the beginning. Humans. Man, he created us. We sinned. And it's so cool that in the end, the one from the beginning actually came 
to create a way for us to be saved. And the Bible says this, that he's the Alpha and the Omega, right? He's, come, he's the one who was and who is and is to come. And if you don't know him, this would be a great, great time for you to know him. I'm going to pray for us. And I want you that are watching right now, I want just everyone, just in your house, close your eyes and bow your heads. I want you just to think for a moment. If you're a believer in Jesus, I want you just to be thankful right now. Say, God, thank you that you created me. Thank you that you created everything that I need. Everything that I need, you created. I want you just to say that to him. Begin to worship him even right now. And the rest of you, that there might be some of you that you'd say, I don't know if I know Jesus. Here's the deal. If you're not sure you know Jesus, you probably don't know Jesus. Because when you get saved, you know you're saved. And the way that you get saved is you just simply come before the Lord, confess that you've sinned against him, repent of those sins, which basically means to turn your back on him, and invite Jesus into your life. To those that receive him, the Bible says, to them he gave power to become in strength and become sons of God. Call upon his name. Receive Jesus into your heart right now where you're sitting. Confess your sins to him and invite him in and receive his love. Father, thank you that you are our creator. Jesus, you're our creator. So therefore, if you created us, you can sustain us. And Lord, thank you that we don't have to live in worry and fear about our lives because you hold all things together. When we're in Christ, we are held together by you and by your word. Father, would you bless every single family, every person watching. May your Holy Spirit fill them today. I I pray that your presence would fill every home, heal every broken body, mend every broken heart and mind. God, that those that don't know you, that received you this morning, I pray that you would flood them right now with the life and the love of Jesus, that the power of the Holy Spirit would come upon them. So, Lord, now we're going to stand even in our houses, Lord, and we're going to worship you because you are our creator and we are submitted to you and we love you. Father, thank you, the great judge that you are, that we have been pardoned because of Jesus and because of the blood of Christ. It's a reason to rejoice. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship.
Father God, we ask for that right now, that we would only desire you, that we would want more of you, more of your spirit, more of your power, more of your presence in our life every day. And Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that right now, every person that hears my voice would understand their value to God, their value in his eyes as, the, as he created them. The, they are so valuable that he sent his son to die for them. Lord, let them understand that to the depth of their being, that nothing can separate them from the love of God. Lord, we surrender and say thank you. We praise you for this time. We thank you that you created us. We thank you that you put in thought when you created us and that you love us so dearly. So, Father God, have your way with us this week. Continue to speak with us. Continue to be with us. Continue to pour out your spirit. We love you. We praise you. And we declare you as our king. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Yes, thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for this day. You are so good and faithful. Well, thank you again for joining us here at The Rock. If you said yes to Jesus, or if you want someone to pray with you, or maybe you just felt overwhelmed by a touch from our Heavenly Father, or you just want to say hi, Go ahead and fill out. There's a form that's right below our live stream link or on our web page. We'd love to hear from you. We want to just come alongside of you. We have people that are here to pray for you and talk with you. So go ahead and fill that out. If you have an offering or tithes to give, you can give online. There's a way to text or you can drop it off here at the church. Our doors are open most of the time. You can just drop it in the offering. But we appreciate you joining us. We hope you join us for our Bible studies on Tuesday and Thursday at 10, and we'll see you Wednesday night at 6.30. Have a great day.